Now I'd like you to imagine that your whole A-level is a bit like a sandwich. Basically, you have a load of stuff in year 12 and then a load of stuff in year 13. However, some of you might not want the whole thing or perhaps you've got to have half the sandwich before you eat the whole thing. And therefore, this video is all about the AS levels, which is basically the stuff that you do at the end of year 12. And what I'd like to look at are the exams, which are called breadth and depth in physics. So at the end of year 12, if you're doing OCR, what you have are two exams, okay? And each exam is worth the same amount. Uh, first of all, you have something called breadth in physics, and then you have something called depth in physics. And it's the same if you do OCR biology or OCR chemistry as well. Now, each of these exams is worth 70 marks, and you get an hour and a half to do it, so 70 marks in 90 minutes. And this video is really about a bit more about the structure of the exams and the kind of questions that you might expect. So first of all, we have breadth in physics. And basically, this is questions from across the whole specification. So that means modules one, two, three, and four. And it could be, you know, kind of uh, all sorts of different questions. Now, in actual fact, uh, it's 70 marks in total. And if we think about the split of the paper, the first 20 marks are all due to multiple choice. So here we have 20 marks, and it takes about 25 minutes of advice. So 20 marks in 25 minutes. So that means just over a minute per mark. Now what you're going to get are 20 questions. Each of them is multiple choice. And for each one of these, there are four answers. Now basically one of them is correct, and the other three are what we call distractors. And these answers here, you know, they look almost right. They might be out by a power of 10. It might be where you've divided something by something else, or maybe the reciprocal of the right answer. Now, th these questions, although they're multiple choice, they are not easy. And really, my advice to you is, first of all, don't look at the answers at all, OK? Have a look at the question, work out what you think is the right answer before you even think about actually looking at the answers, OK? Now, basically, if, uh, if you can get it in about a minute or so, that's good. So, uh, again, my advice is don't look at the answers. Otherwise, the answers there will distract you. Now, if you can't get it, then move on to the next one. And at the end of the paper, what you need to do then is just have a guess. You know, if you've got, uh, there's nothing to lose, you can choose what, you know, A, B, C or D. And basically, uh, if you have a guess, if it's like an intuitive guess, then you might be correct. You know, there's no point leaving something blank. So this is maybe different to the past papers that you've seen, but it's something that's really, really important. And you've got to practice multiple choice. Don't think because there's a choice it's going to be B or it's going to be easy. These are really, really tricky. So what about the other uh, 50 marks? Well, basically, these 50 marks are on questions which are structured. And that means it might have, you know, part A, part I, uh, part I, I, and so on. And again, this is going to be lots of sort of fairly short questions about the whole specification. And that's why it's called breadth in physics. Now, this one here, um, again, it's just practice doing past papers, doing things like Isaac physics to get better at this kind of thing. And basically, um, you've got 70 marks in total and you've got 90 minutes to actually complete the paper. And once again, this covers the whole spec, so modules one, two, three, and four. But this time, there's uh, basically a mix of kind of questions which are structured. And also, there are a lot of questions which are kind of your long answer questions, okay? And this is where, um, you know, it does get hard, okay? They're going to look at one area in particular, which we don't know, and they're going to dr drill deeper and deeper and deeper to really check that you understand that subject. The other thing is that I'm not quite sure of the split. I think it depends on each paper, but it's not like a, a certain amount of marks for each. So it's a bit more of an uneven split between the structured and the long answer questions. Now, these long answer questions, basically, they are what we call synoptic. Now, synoptic questions uh, only used to sort of be seen at the full A level a couple of years ago, but this kind of mixes up all the parts of the course. So there might perhaps be a question to do with uh, electricity and circuits, which then moves on to waves, and then has a bit about maybe some SUVAT equations within it. Now, if you know your physics, it's absolutely fine. But the hard thing is, and, you know, the physics will only be whatever they talk about in the exam specification, the hard thing is about the context. OK, they don't just say object A uh, impacts of object B. Uh, we give the masses and it will, it's what, you know, what's the momentum of that kind of collision. It's going to give a, maybe a real world scenario. And the context is the hardest bit. The reality is that the actual mathematics you have to do is fairly simple. The actual numbers you multiply together is going to be straightforward. There's no differentiation or integration. 
but the hardest bit is actually working out what the question is asking. It'll have weird scenarios, it'll have washing machines, it'll have ovens in, instead of just a normal electric circuit. And this is something that you can only improve by doing pass paper question after pass paper question. The other thing is that there's going to be less scaffolding. Okay, scaffolding is uh, basically when you have a question that says, you know, for part A, work out uh, maybe something, okay, then use this answer to work out your answer to part two, which then gives your answer to part three, and then use this answer to work out your question, uh, your answer to maybe part B. Scaffolding gets the red, red of all these kind of little steps, and it'll give you a load of information, and then you've got to basically work your way from answer A to answer B without being helped along the way. And again, you know, there's no secret, you've just got to do more and more physics, you know, you've got to know your content, you've got to be confident in what you're doing to actually kind of go for these kind of longer answer questions. And the thing is the exam, basically about, only about 10% is basic recall. So that's your definitions, that's your state, you know, what is Newton's first law, define uh, or state uh, what velocity is, okay? That's actually a very small amount. 40% at least is going to be based on your mathematical ability, which, you know, is kind of obvious because it's physics, it's a very mathematical subject, but that then does leave another kind of 50%, you know, that's going to be on your understanding, your descriptions and your explanations, okay? So, does that make sense? Uh, hopefully it does, but basically it's not going to be easy. No matter uh, how hard you try, it's going to be hard. You know, the government want the exams to be more testing for the most able, but you can rest assured that however many, however many people got A's last year, there's going to be the same amount this year because, you know, the grades don't change that much. So if it's hard, that's absolutely fine, and it's the same for everybody else in the country. But the, even by the fact that you're watching this video, it means you're kind of a bit proactive and it means you're a lot better well off than many other people around who are actually doing the same exam. So basically, the breadth and depth in physics, both papers cover all of the course. They will be hard, but, you know, that's just life, OK? The more you can do to practice now in terms of revision, in terms of practising questions and past exam paper questions under time conditions, the better you're going to get on in the summer. So, until then, good luck. Thanks.